So this is it. This is the one, the fourth wall breaking, balls to the wall, adrenaline laden, Frankenstein, monstrosity of a sequel. It has everything from Jason to a hit song from Alice Cooper. CJ Graham plays Jason this time and he is formidable. Tom Matthews plays Tommy Jarvis this time and is probably my favorite Tommy Jarvis. He also came back for the Womp Stomp Films Never Hike Alone series that's free to watch on YouTube by the way. And as a bonus in the opener you get Arnold Dingfelder Horshack from Welcome Back Cotter. How about that? Hello? Hello? Is anyone else feeling as old as I am right now? The soundtrack is done by Harry Manfredini. The film was written by Tom McLaughlin, Victor Miller, and Sean S. Cunningham. And it was also directed by Tom McLaughlin. And if you can't already tell how I feel about this film, I like it. I love it! We open up with Tommy Jarvis, who just escaped from the mental institution, along with Welcome Back Carter's Horshack. They're on their way to put Jason to bed, once and for all. It's also the movie that introduces all of the supernatural elements into the Friday universe. Even though the other films introduce supernatural elements such as Jason's inability to be destroyed, uh, this one really takes it to new heights. It gets pretty ridiculous, and I love it. I mean, the similarities between this and Frankenstein. <laughs> A little bit of lightning and voila! Jason is back. That was downright heartless. We even get a James Bond opening title card this time. Now this film just hits the ground running. There's no waiting around for the action to start. It is balls to the wall action from beginning to end. Tommy makes his way to the Sheriff's Department of Forest Green since they changed the name after all the killings and reopened the camp. And after a quick scuffle and trying to convince the Sheriff that Jason's back, they lock Tommy up because they know who he is. And he just came from the mental hospital. So obviously he's insane and we cannot trust him at all. Are these people really from Crystal Lake? I mean... Really? Really? You, 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 at this point, you're just not going to believe that Jason's out there somewhere. We get our next victims in the form of a couple driving down a muddy dirt road, and they run into none other than Jason Voorhees himself. They try to avoid him, but that doesn't work out. And so the man from Ghost, in an act of chivalry, tries to protect his wife and take care of the situation himself. It does not go well for either of them. Get back in here right now, he'll kill you! Don't leave home without her. Back at the jail, Tommy meets the sheriff's daughter, which doesn't please him at all. And back at the cemetery, we get to see the caretaker, burying the body of our dear friend, and the fourth wall breaking commences. Some folks have a strange idea to entertain. Back at our newly opened camp, there's real children this time, which also makes this an actual horror film. There they are, and they're all yours. Jason slowly makes his way back to camp and runs into these shlomos, and some of the things that they say are just fantastic. You should have stayed in the kitchen, what you want? The bandanas that they wear are a little on the nose, don't you think? And they all meet their demise in hilarious ways. The director definitely had a sense of humor. This is the most fun of all the Friday films for sure, and that's why it's most favorite. It doesn't take itself too seriously, but it still has good scares, excellent kills, and probably has the best soundtrack. And I love the fact that they literally resurrect Jason this time. Eternal Peace Cemetery, how ironic. Tommy gives the sheriff and his goon a run for their money and tries to prove to them that Jason's grave is empty and he has been resurrected. 
Which proves to no avail because it's been filled in by the caretaker. Wherever the red dot goes, you bang. What? What are you talking about? Don't concern yourself, Martin. This kid needs treatment. Does he think I'm a fart head? Camp counselors clearly don't know what to do with these kids, which is just fine in this situation, as they will all be dead soon. <laughs> uh, that's not funny. I guess we'll just drop the psycho off at the edge of town and just leave him go free, because that's a good idea. These people just deserve to die. I don't know why Tommy's trying so hard to stop him. Jason's doing us a service. Hey, I like that guy. And why are these two out in the woods at all? I mean, especially with the history around here. Back at camp, the kids say they've seen a monster, but Jason hasn't been there yet. Because he's found an unsuspecting couple in an RV having premarital sex. Don't do it, dude. Jump scare. This guy drives like my mother. Oh, it looks like they picked up a hitchhiker. This is great! Ouch. Jason is literally a superhero in this film. Like, he should just have a big red S on the front of his shirt. The most epic shot of the whole film, ladies and gentlemen. Back at the sheriff's office, we catch up with him and his daughter, having some friendly banter. And now they believe Tommy is the one doing the killing. And honestly, that is exactly what it looks like. But his daughter is all too eager to be killed by Mr. Thomas Jarvis, and she definitely has daddy issues. Finally, Jason makes his way to the camp. The sheriff finds the paintball victims, at least parts of them. This girl decides to give Jason a little head. I have to wake the kids. Tommy and the sheriff's daughter decide to outrun the police. But alas, they get caught. Line. Valiant effort. <gasps> Paula, I can't sleep. <laughs> you thought that was Jason, huh? Well, oh! Stop doing that. They get a phone call proving that Tommy isn't the one doing the killing, but they lock him up anyway and head back to camp. Jason is still stalking around, getting ready to slaughter whoever gets in his way, and boy does he ever. <coughs> My goodness, just brutal. Back at the jail, they devise a plan to escape. Tommy gets some smoochy smoochy and the plan works. You better do as she says. Wherever the red dot goes, you bang. And off they go to finish what Tommy started. The plan is to drown Jason. Which, to be fair, I think we're a little beyond that now. Oh, come on. Is he really going to kill the kids? If we should die before I wake up, I'll see. Hey, look, prayer does work. But these cops sure don't have one. Stay out of my wood, you vermin. After the sheriff plays Pied Piper and makes sure all the kids are safe, he goes back out into the woods instead of staying with the kids and finds not only his deputy, but Jason as well. Fires a few well-placed shotgun blasts, but that doesn't work. So he runs into the woods away from Jason. Tommy and the sheriff's daughter show up at camp to make sure the kids are safe. And Tommy puts his plan into action. These kids are hilarious. What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Jason makes quick work of the sheriff, who literally bends over backwards to do his job. <laughs> Megan goes to save the kids, and oh yeah, uh, that's the sheriff's daughter's name by the way. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Jason! Jason, come on! Come and get me! But Jason has other plans. Get out of there! Tommy gets his attention. Come on, I'm standing here waiting! Come on, you pussy! <laughs> he sets the lake on fire. Is this Lake Erie? And after a brief struggle on Tommy's dinghy, 
to the bottom of the lake they sink. <laughs> Megan leaves the children and jumps in to save Tommy. But Jason hasn't given up yet. And after she motorboats his face, he finally gives up and drowns, I guess. And Jason's finally dead. Well, that was Friday the 13th, Part 6. Jason lives, and with the last scene, stands true to its name. Now, not to jump too far ahead of ourselves, this was one of the arguments for Sam Raimi, Rob Tappert, and Bruce Campbell to not actually do the Ash vs. Freddy vs. Evil Dead, whatever you may call it, sequel to Freddy vs. Jason that they were going to do. Because their argument was you cannot really kill Jason or Freddy, so what is the point? And that's it. Friday the 13th Part 6 Jason Lives is a great film. It is very tongue in cheek. All the kills are awesome and it's just classic a true fun monster movie that doesn't take itself too seriously and captures everything about the 80s and the genre that we love so much and well that's it guys like and subscribe stay tuned for more friday the 13th goodness next up part seven a new beginning and it just gets crazier from here. And in the immortal words of Leslie Nielsen. I love it. <laughs>